The Big Thick is a new indie uh, romantic comedy directed by uh, Michael Showalter and uh, written by Emily Gordon and Kumail Nanjiani about their life, essentially. And I love this film. There's an infection. We put her in a medically induced coma. Coma. You should call her family. Thank you, Kamala. We're gonna handle things from here. I think I'm just gonna wait anyway. You guys broke up. I'm not sure why you're here. I'm just gonna stay for a second. Is this seat? Okay. Is, is that lady still looking at me? So Kamal Nanjiani uh, plays himself. Uh, and, uh, you know, he is a Pakistani born uh, that was uh, came to America when he was a teenager. And he, his family, he really, all they want from him is to be a good Muslim, to, uh, to become a, a lawyer, and to marry a Pakistani woman. But he, won, he doesn't know if he believes in Allah. He hasn't prayed for years. And, you know, he uh, wants to become a stand-up comedian. And he would never want to be with a woman that was picked out for him by his mom. So, you know, it's a lot of interesting um, discussion about these aspects of his character. Like, there's, there's multiple moments throughout the film where, you know, he does stand-up comedy and he uh, does a one-man show and they show clips of it. And he talks a lot about that, you know, in, 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 the, in the jokes. And, you know, it's a really interesting uh, character as, you know, uh, as a leading role. Because, you know, he does not look like the uh, normal leading man, uh, especially in a romantic comedy. You know, he's uh, obviously, he's uh, Middle Eastern. And, I mean, he's uh, a little pudgy. I mean, the, or, or at least he's not as fit as a uh, normal Hollywood uh, star would be. And, you know, the woman that plays his, uh, Emily in this film, Zoe Kazan, she is not, you know, Hollywood leading lady beautiful. And I really, uh, enjoyed that casting that is very, di is very different. And the casting throughout the whole film and how it's shot and how it's written, it feels incredibly real. Like, it feels like you're viewing things that really happened, but not in a masturbatory sense. You know, sometimes when you watch and semi-autobiographical film, and it's written by one person. I really think it can come off as you know, fake and really through one guy's lens, and again, like masturbatory. But uh, maybe because, you know, he's kind of self-deprecating in his humor, but also that it was written by Emily as well, that you get kind of multiple angles on the experience, and it comes off as just an excellent film. And I absolutely loved it again. So while it does follow the common three-act structure of a romantic comedy, it does a, a, a real, a, a, do a different play on it. Where, you know, yes, the first act is the meet-cute between the two love interests. And then, you know, they the growing relationship. And then, you know, they're together and they're loving each other. And then, you know, the second act would be, you know, when they hit a rough passion in their relationship. But in this movie, that's just the, like, the beginning of that act, when a little bit after that, you know, if you don't know from the title of the movie or for any of the information on the advertising, uh, Emily becomes sick, and she's put into a medically induced coma. And that is, starts off a long second act where, you know, one side of the relationship is asleep, essentially, and Kumail goes through a lot of incredible experiences that changes his life. And, you know, it creates a really interesting third act for it. Because, you know, the woman wasn't really in the second act. And instead, in the second act, it's really Kumail uh, come to terms with telling the truth to his family. Even though that may mean that they would never talk to him again. That they may shun him. And, you know, talking to Emily's parents. And Emily's parents, you know, Holly Hunter and Ray Romano, are so good. They really uh, almost steal this movie out from Kamel. Because they are in incredibly well-written and well-acted. And endearing, but also, you know, they're flawed. They're highly flawed people. And I love the aspect of the characters. They, they you know, a lot of stuff happens with them where, you know, they are... 
in a really hard time that they're worried about their daughter, but they also, you know, if, if you ever spent time with a loved one in the hospital, like, you know, life has to go on, then you, ha you find humor in things, and even when the horrible stuff is going on, like, you go on. And there are these moments throughout the film that, like, it's, I laughed a lot. It's the funniest film I've seen in a while. But at the same time, it's, it's not, like, awkward. Like, well, the, the scenes that the humor is different. And I know it's, not all people may love it. But for me, like, I know it, the theater was relatively full. And, you know, for the obvious, like, laugh out loud scenes you're supposed to laugh at, I mean, everyone's laughing at. But then there's the other smaller scenes where... In a moment of awkwardness or sadness, there'll be uh, a little humor in it. And I know that the, the people laughing uh, the most is only me and some guy way in the back. And the rest of them, you know, no one really laughed that much at them. And I think that I love that humor, but it may not hit right for everyone. I also love that everyone, no matter how small the part, really felt like um, human beings. They felt like... They felt like real people instead of just, you know, a side character or an extra. And I saw that especially with uh, the uh, the women that his mom brings over for him to meet. And, you know, I, there's a great line with him, you know, in Pakistan, uh, we call arranged marriage, marriage. And, uh, you know, you feel that, you know, these women, these beautiful Pakistani women that he doesn't have want anything to do with, you know, they are real women. And... You know, can you imagine going into a guy's house, meeting him for the first time, and having to perform in front of his family for him to try to get him to maybe they could do um, a date and then they could get arranged marriage, arranged married, and uh, you know, it's that'd be so awkward. Like I, like, it'd be incredibly anxiety-inducing uh, experience. And, you know, he kind of just dismisses them because he doesn't want to have to deal with he having this woman brought him with her trying to have a family dinner. But at the same time, like, you like you get that angle where, especially with one later that he talks to more, and you get the angle, that, you know, that they're, they're a person too, and they're, you know, they, they hate this as well, but, you know, they want to do it. They have to do it. And there's a lot of great things with that. It's great too how, you know, a lot of the scenes are set in public. You know, in the hospital or in other restaurants and or in the or a stand-up uh, club, and uh, you know the extras aren't just completely quiet. Like some movies, they just like tell them to stand there and not interact with the actors at all. But in this one, like they'll bring him in. Like Camille will go, uh, "Is that lady still staring at me?" Or there's a lot of like little things like that, and they'll like comment about it. Or they, it's it's really. The entire film is just so perfect and so enjoyable and so endearing. Like, it's it's an excellent film that I would highly recommend. I mean, it's funny, but it's also sad, and it's also romantic, and it's also just interesting. Because you get a lot of look into his life, Kamel. And I loved it. Like, I would give it probably like a 9.25 or 9.5 out of 10. You know, I really enjoyed this film, and I, I think, I hope more people come out and watch it. And I know I, I really like what Amazon did with releasing this film. But, you know, instead of just, you know, going to their streaming service, you know, they found a great film, they bought it, and then they kind of released it in the color places uh, at a week. And finally, when the buzz has reached a height, they released it in a bunch of theaters. And, you know, if they can do that with more smaller films, I really look forward to, you know, the, what happens with that. If they get more movies of quality of Big Thick and Manchester by the Sea last year, I mean, I'm really hopeful for, you know, the future of smaller movies. But uh, thanks for watching, and you can check out my other uh, review playlists around my head or subscribe to me over here. Thanks.